visiting our NFL mock draft. The last one was a little bit of a disaster. I, um, I, I did it just before uh, free agency opened up. So, teams' needs evolved dramatically. Things like that. So, hopefully this time around we've got a little bit of a better one here. And as always, just like last time, I'm not a college sports person. Uh, I'm not really a, you know, I'm not a draft guy. I kind of just, I know a handful of the big names. I don't expect in-depth um, analysis behind all these picks. Um, the, the, the goal of these videos, as always, is relaxation. So, um, now... So what you'll see as I did is I changed a little bit from last time and I just have the drafting team in their pick. Then I listed what that team needs. Uh, I just kind of went through and looked at like where I thought weaknesses on their roster were. And then I'm going to put down which player I'm selecting at each spot um, at those picks. So we're going to start off with the number one oh, and also I'm not um, predicting or mocking any trades. I know that some mock drafts will like mock trades and then draft for the team that they think is going to trade into that spot. It's so unpredictable that I'm not even going to attempt to do that. So I'm going to do this draft completely assuming that nobody is trading their pick. Although, obviously, that's not actually going to happen. So, we're going to come to the first overall pick, the Chicago Bears. Now, this is pretty obvious for most people. Or at least it was. There's been a couple of these news stories coming out recently about J.J. McCarthy and, like, originally, like, his, his odds in the draft, like, his odds to go with, like, number two overall were, like, really low. And all of a sudden, like, just out of the blue, um, he started getting crazy. Let me see when I read this report. Uh, the Pet MGM odds for Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy going second overall had a noteworthy move early this week. McCarthy was plus 2,500 to be the second pick on Monday. And by Tuesday morning, he was plus 800. Then late Tuesday morning, the odds moved again to plus 400, so Vegas might know something we don't. But I think I'm smarter than that. I think that it's a smokescreen. Now this is all subterfuge. And actually, Chicago will be drafting J.J. McCarthy with the first overall selection. Now, J.J. McCarthy, he is a quarterback from Michigan, like we just said. Uh, he's only 20 years old. He's six foot three, 219 pounds. Um, you know, and, you know, we put him in there with that, you know, Chicago team that just got rid of Justin Fields, and I think he's a guy that can step right in and, um, April Fools. I wonder. I wonder how many people have left a dislike on this video already, or left a comment. This video is going up April first, and I could not help myself there. <laughs> I was like, "This is gonna catch some people out. Some people are not gonna find this very funny." Uh, no, I don't think J.J. McCarthy is going first overall. Uh, I think that is Caleb Williams. Our quarterback from the University of Southern California, 6'1", 214 pounds, 3,633 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. 5 interceptions. But now, that thing I 
just read about J.J. McCarthy that is real, and his odds to go second overall have been rising in the last week. Uh, for a while, uh, Drake May was the favorite to get picked second overall. At some point, Jaden Daniels, he became the, the Vegas betting favorite to go second overall. And now, J.J. McCarthy is creeping up. I think he's now the second favorite, so it seems like Washington's either going to end up with Jaden Daniels or J.J. McCarthy. Now, me personally, I think that Jaden Daniels is the better quarterback. Um, well, I think they, they're both good. They both have their strengths, in my opinion. I don't think they go McCarthy here, even though he's like the second favorite. I think that it'll either be Daniels or May. Jaden Daniels almost feels more like a modern, prototypical QB. He's a dual threat QB. He's kind of a game manager a little bit. Whereas Drake May is kind of more of a throwback. He's a strong arm QB. He wants to be in the pocket a bit more. Um, now the problem here is that it's Washington, so you never really know what they're going to do. But um, just for sake of argument, I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. Um, I don't know what the deal is with the, um, the Vegas odds. I'm not going to pretend to know. Maybe somebody knows something we don't. I don't know, but... I'm going to take the safe bet here and say Jaden Daniels goes second overall to the Washington Commanders. He's six foot four, turned in bounds at 3,812 passing yards, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions. I think he plays a, a super electric game. Uh, now New England. Sorry, I should have been reading out the team needs as well. I think Chicago needs a quarterback, O-line, wide receiver. I think Washington needs quarterback, O-line, and D-line. I put a lot of teams needing offensive line. I think it is the most in-demand position in the modern NFL. New England, I think they need a quarterback. I think they need a wide receiver, and I think they need a tackle. Now, if any team is going to trade out of the first round, I think it might be New England. I could very well see them trading this pick. Moving down a few spots, maybe to seven, maybe to grab J.J. McCarthy, and I'm getting maybe another pick from New York down the line, because New England has so many team needs. So if anyone's going to trade, I think it could be New England. I could see them moving down, so New York could move up and get Drake May here, because he might be a guy they like. But I said I'm not going to predict any trades, so I'm going to say it's second overall. Drake May is going to be picked by the New England Patriots. Quarterback of North Carolina, 6'4", 223 pounds, 3,608 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Um, like I said, he's big, strong play caller. Really good arm talent. I think he kind of reminds me of um, Justin Herbert a little bit, just the way he plays at QB. Now here at fourth overall, we come to the Arizona Cardinals, who in my opinion are likely getting the best player, just talent-wise, in this draft here at four. And they're getting Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver out of Ohio State. Um, he is six foot three and a half inches, 209 pounds. He had 67 receptions for 1,211 yards, 14 touchdowns, averaged 18.1 yards per reception. Also had 26 rushing yards. Um, but I know he, he's super, super athletic. 
he has great hands, like he has hands of glue. Uh, he's a really good playmaker for a wide receiver, and I think he's one of the best wide receiver prospects we've seen in a very long time. He's a super, super exciting watch. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but wide receiver is my favorite position in football. Uh, and watching him play, you know, it's going to suck if he goes to Arizona because that's a division rival for my team, the Seahawks. But I'll get to see this dude play a few times a year. And I think he's going to be super electric. I think he's going to be a great player. And like I said, I think just talent-wise, he might be the best player in this draft. Now, fifth overall pick, the Los Angeles Chargers. I think they need offensive line. They need defensive tackle. And they need a wide receiver. Um, now, this is a guy, I think I mocked him a little bit lower in the last draft. But he's really solidified himself a bit higher up the board and on pretty much everybody's boards. Um... So I decided to move him up as well, just to kind of, I think I, I, in my last draft, I mocked Rome Odunze going ahead to this guy, um, just because my personal opinion is I like Rome a little bit better, because he's a little bit taller, a little bit heavier, and that's what I personally like in a wide receiver, but it seems, you know, this guy seems pretty much mocked here by pretty much everybody. And looking at the way he plays, I think he'll be a good weapon for uh, Justin Herbert to have. And that's Malik Neighbors. Nabbers, Neighbors, I'm not sure. Wide receiver out of LSU. He's six foot, 200 pounds. Uh, last season, he had 89 receptions for 1,569 yards. 14 touchdowns, averaging 17.6 yards. Um, per reception now I think that the Chargers offensive line is probably more important for them but they just got rid of Keenan Allen uh, and right now Quentin Johnston is their wide receiver one and that dude was an absolute nightmare last season you can't have Quentin Johnston as wide receiver one so even though maybe like technically offensive line is the more pressing issue for the Chargers and getting Herbert some more protection. I think that you need to take neighbors here. And I don't think there's any chance at all the Chargers trade up for that Arizona pick to get Harrison, even though as a Justin Herbert fan, I would like to see that. But neighbors is extremely, extremely fast. Um, he's super explosive off the jump, super fast, and I think that with Justin Herbert having that big arm, he can get the ball really deep. You let this guy come off the line of scrimmage and just run super fast, get open 20 yards downfield or whatever. I think that uh, him and Justin Herbert can make a really dangerous combo, um, to, to just getting the ball deep into enemy territory, big chunk yards, um, and that'll be, it's a kind of player I really want to see Justin Herbert with. Now, sixth overall pick, we have the New York Giants. receiver they need to line I actually don't I didn't look who I just know they need a QB because they guarded Daniel Jones but I don't actually know who the New York Giants starting QB is going to be it's not the Italian dude is it what's his name because Daniel Jones is gone right I thought he I thought he got didn't he Daniel Jones got picked up. Hold on, hold on. Why did I think that they treated him 
ever got him. I feel very unprepared for this video. I just have a handful of different mocks up. Um, and I think that's pretty locked in. The winter contact of 2026. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to change my pick then. As a rich, I'm gonna have them taking JJ McCarthy here. Because I thought Daniel Jones was gone for some reason. But if he's. But he's not the guy. They know he's not the guy, but they're paying him so much money. They're not gonna pay him all that money just to sit him. Minnesota makes a ton of sense. Tennessee, I could see treating this pick. Minnesota moves up. Tennessee gets some more draft capital elsewhere. Maybe this 24th overall pick and something else. Michigan, or Michigan, Minnesota ends up with McCarthy at 7. The Giants take Roma Dunze here. But do they want Dale Jones throwing this dude the ball? But then again, do they want Dale Jones sitting on the bench making like 40? Dollars a year, whatever it is. Um, I'm not doing trades. So JJ McCarthy, the New York Giants. I think that it's very possible, if not maybe more likely than this, that the New York Giants take Rome or Dunze here at six. And Tennessee trades this pick to Minnesota in exchange for this pick here, and maybe this pick here, maybe some second or third round or something instead. And then Minnesota takes J.J. McCarthy at seven. I think that's perhaps what is likely going to happen, but I'm not drafting. I'm not predicting pick, uh, trade. So in this mock I'm doing, Dale Jones is going to sit his $40 million or whatever it is on the bench, and J.J. McCarthy is going to New York Giants for uh, J.J. McCarthy, quarterback from Michigan, 6'2.5", 2,992 2, passing yards, 22 touchdowns, 4 picks, complete and completion percentage of 72.3%, which is actually the best of any of the QBs in the top of this draft. Um, but yeah, but these, the number two overall thing, there's a lot of really weird stuff going on with J.G. McCarthy right now with the Vegas odds and a lot of stuff with him, but, um, yeah, I don't know too much about him, I haven't seen him too much, I, a lot of people say he reminds them of Zach Wilson, and that's never a good thing. Alright, now we have the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee has a really good roster, honestly. They're just kind of building around um, Will Levis, and I think that they need to get in protection. I think that's their most important thing this draft. So I'm going to take Joe Alt here. Now, I think in my last draft, I had uh, Olu Fashanu or Dali Seifuaga. I think I had one of those alignment ahead of Joe Alt. Um, but it seems like now that things have um, kind of fizzled out a little bit going after the combine, Joe Alt has kind of come out as the consensus number one offensive tackle in this draft. He's super quick off the jump. He has good footwork. 5.05, uh, 40 yard dash. He's gigantic, 6 foot 8 and a half inches, 321 pounds. Uh, I think he has pro bowl potential. I'm looking at him a little bit. So I'm going to go Joe Alt to Tennessee there, the 7th overall pick. Next up, Atlanta. I think that they need an edge rusher bad. I think they have a really good roster going into next.
next season, but I think that defense is definitely a spot for them they need to focus on. They brought in some good offensive pieces. So I'm giving them the best edge rusher in the draft, in my opinion. Quinion Mitchell. Um, no, excuse me, I got... Turner. So Dallas Turner, he is a dresser from Alabama, six foot three inches, two hundred and forty seven pounds. Um, last season he had fifty three tackles, ten sacks, and two forced fumbles. Um dude is super quick, four point four six second forty yard dash, forty point five inch vertical jump, extremely elite athlete. And I think that's a guy that is super explosive. He's a junior, so he's, you know, he's played for three years. He's proven himself, and I think that he will get taken there to Atlanta. Now, originally, I was going to dead predict Chicago to take a wide receiver. But Chicago just got Keenan Allen, and honestly, they brought in some really good offensive pieces through free agency and some other moves in the last few weeks. So I'm giving them defensive back. Quinion Mitchell, six foot, 195 pounds. Uh, he's super, again, a really good athlete. 4.33 second, 40 yard dash. Um, no, he's not that. He's not that tall, but he's like solid. Uh, he he says here that he's a one. One of the mocks has him as a cornerback. One of them just has him as a defensive back. So I'm assuming he mainly plays corner. Um, he had 41 tackles, 18 pass defenses, one interception last season. All right, the New York Jets. The Jets, Jets, Jets. I think they need offensive line. And they need a wide receiver. Is considering potentially, um, what was I going to say? I was saying potentially the idea that they need a backup QB with Aaron Rodgers and then maybe like getting ready to stand as he gets older, or God forbid, if he gets injured again. But it's like, uh, no, that doesn't really, that doesn't seem as important as, important as these two positions to me. So the New York Jets, I think they need an offensive lineman. Joe Alt, I think, will go off the board to Tennessee. Although if he doesn't, obviously they take him. I considered maybe giving them Brock. I'm still a little bit torn Brock Bowers because he's a tight end. He could block. Right? You know, he could block for them. Um, but I just don't. I just don't know how good he is as a blocker. D -d -d rugged, rough and double pass catcher, muscular frame, explosive movement, playmaker, 40% snaps getting from the slot, 11% out wide, creates mismatches, causes havoc for opposing defenses, a pass catcher, and blocker. Because I was originally, I'm kind of <laughs> changing things on the fly here as I go. I was originally going to give them Olu Fashanu offensive tackle. So you need them Olu Fashanu. But now, looking at it, do I think Bowers because he's blocking? give them Brock Bowers. I talked myself out of it. I'm updating my mock in real time here as I look at these player profiles and things. Brock Bowers, a tight end from Georgia, 6'3", 243 pounds. Last season he had 56 receptions for 714 yards, 
six touchdowns, averaging 12.8 yards per reception, and he had 28 rushing yards. But I mean, six foot three, 243. That dude is a beast, absolute beast. Okay, now we come to Minnesota. Minnesota, I said they need a uh, a QB or defense now. Kind of messed me up because I do think they end up with McCarthy, like I said. Um, but they need pretty much any defense as well. So theoretically, in this, assuming that McCarthy's off the board, Taise Fuaka and um, O2 for Shawnee are still there, and anyone can use offensive linemen. And if they don't go here to Minnesota, I think they probably end up in Las Vegas, at least one of the two. But do they take Jared Verse is my only thinking, because then he might be a bit of a reach here. Do they take, it might be a bit of a reach. Rusher. I just don't know if Minnesota takes a lineman here. If they, assuming they have this pick. Those two are great options. Because Jared Verse is mocked to go. Well, he's 15th on the big board, Jared Verse. So this would be a bit of a reach, taking him at 11. This draft, I'm, this other draft, like, yeah, but as I'm going 14th to New Orleans. Yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Jared Verse here. I think, I don't think they'll grab a lineman, even if the two good ones, really good ones left are there. I, I like, honestly messed up my own mock I had written down, like, already with these picks. I'm kind of, like, editing on the fly here. Jared Verse, Edge from Florida State, 6 foot 4 inches, 254 pounds, big old boy, 41 tackles, 9 sacks, 1 forced fumble. Now we come to Denver. I said Denver needs, basically, anybody. Um... Russell Wilson's gone. Jerry Judy's gone. They have Jared Stidham in a QB. They got rid of, um, oh, they got rid of one other guy, Camber's name right now. You know, he's dropped really far here. I might have actually kind of forgot to write him down at this point, because I probably should have gone to well, New York, I think, would take blocking over him. Yeah, the Minnesota doesn't really need a wide receiver. So the, in this, he kind of falls a little bit, but I'll have Denver taking Roma Dense. He's number nine on the big board. So I have him going here at 12, which is a bit of a fall. But I'm trying to take team needs into account with all this going on. And I change my own predictions on the fly. Uh, Roman didn't say he's a wide receiver from Washington. Six foot to three inches, 212 pounds. Last season he had 92 receptions for 1,640 yards. 13 touchdowns, averaging 17.8 yards per reception. Okay. Now we come to the Las Vegas Raiders, 13th overall pick, and this is where things are going to start making sense again. I see this one take J.C. Latham here. In my opinion, this is too early for J.C. Latham. I think that they take... Honestly, I have a hard time distinguishing here between Olu, Vajanu, and Talise Fuaga. I can't really tell who I think is better. I think they're both like a tier below Joe Alt, most likely. But, um, like they're both, in my opinion, like neck and neck. So I'm just gonna go the 
these two are interchangeable in my opinion but I think in this order these two guys are gonna go uh at least say Fuwakahi well not this order but I, you know I think these two guys will go back to back together because they're the two of the three best offensive linemen so teams that need offensive linemen are gonna take these guys Talia Sefuaka, offensive tackle from Oregon State, 6'6", six six, 324 pounds. And Olu, that's not his full name. What's his full name? Olu Lomoiwa Fashanu, offensive tackle from Penn State. He is 6'6", six six, 312 pounds. Both these guys, in my opinion, are pro-ready, NFL-ready, and uh, they'll, they'll help any offensive line that, that really needs them. Uh, that needs help with offensive line, now 15th overall. We have the Indianapolis Colts. I think that they need a wide receiver or a DB. A DB. Um, that I'm going with here. Do, 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 do. Wow, this draft doesn't even have this guy. I'm just looking all over here. This draft doesn't even have this guy on it. Why is that? Unless I missed him. They had my going earlier. Yeah, they did. This may be a bit lower. This draft I'm looking at here has him as the 12th best player in the draft on the big board. And this one here has him at 15th. They actually haven't mocked it this big, but it might be, it makes sense for him to go here. And that is Darion Arnold. Six foot, 89 pound cornerback from uh, Alabama. He had, he had 63 tackles, one sack, 12 pass defenses, five interceptions, and one forced fumble. Now we come to Seattle. I think Seattle needs an offensive lineman. I think that we need an edge. There's a couple here that I'm looking at now. Um, now that's actually something interesting I didn't think about until just now. Because I was originally here predicting to have them take uh, Leatu Latu or JC Latham here. I can't decide between those two. But Troy Fautanu is an offensive tackle, interior offensive lineman from Washington. And Seattle just hired um, a bunch of Washington like the head coaches from Washington, the offensive coordinator. Was it the offensive coordinator, defense coordinator? One of the two is has a connection to Washington. So do they maybe grab a guy here that they have familiarity with? I think it'd be a reach. This board I'm looking at has him 22nd overall on the big board. Uh, this one has him at 20th, and this is the 16th overall pick. So this draft has Seattle you know, taking Le Leatu Latu. And this one has him taking Amarius Mims. But I think that that Washington connection is actually going to play a role here. Yeah, that seems like a Seattle thing. I'll have them taking Troy Fautanu, 6'4", 317 pounds, uh, 5.01 second 40 yard dash, 32 and a half inch vertical jump, 9 foot 5 broad jump, uh, super quick, good footwork, super versatile, but we'll see with that, 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 I don't know if I like that pick, it just kind of feels like 
a Seattle pick, if that makes sense. No, I said I think Jacksonville needs defense. I think that they need, um, to me that's, that's the big one for them. And, um, give me here Byron Murphy, the second interior defensive lineman from Texas. Six foot one, two hundred ninety seven pounds. Um, you know they they did get Arc Armstrong, uh, so they already have some guys. But I think you can never get you never have that many guys. You know defensive linemen, and a lot of people have this guy as the best D lineman in this draft. This this draft has a nineteenth overall in terms of. This one has been 17th overall. I have him going here at 17 exactly. Jacksonville needs defense. It's another guy. It's depth. Um, I don't know. I'm a little bit iffy on it, but I'm going to stick with it. Now we come to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, in my opinion, this is an easy pick. I think they take J.C. Latham, 6 foot 6, 342 pounds. One draft I'm looking at here, they have him going 13th. They, well, they have him at 13th in terms of talent. This other one has him at 18th in terms of talent. I have him going here at 18. Um, I think he plays at, yeah, he plays at right tackle. Mainly. He's super strong, super quick, big frame. Like I said, 342 pounds, 6 foot 6. And, you know, Joe Burrow needs that protection. Joe Burrow has get, been getting beat up basically every season, dealing with little injuries every season and some big injuries. So give a good offensive lineman here. Now the Rams. The Rams, I said they need DP, they need to edge, they need D-line, and they need O-line. So I'm going to give the guy that uh, I originally was expecting the Seahawks to take, but I ended up changing my mind about that. Edge rusher, Leatu, Latu. Leatu, Latu is an edge rusher from UCLA, so UCLA having that Los Angeles connection. Six foot five, 259 pounds. Last season he had 49 tackles, 13 sacks, two pass defenses, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. I think he's probably the second best edge rusher in this draft. Um, yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. I said Pittsburgh needs a wide receiver and they need an offensive lineman. They just brought in uh, Russell Wilson. And now they have Justin Fields as well. Um, but this is a guy, This is, there's a wide receiver here available. This board has him at 17th overall in terms of talent, so I think it's actually a good pickup for Pittsburgh here, getting him at 20th overall. And I'm going to give them Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU. He's 6'3", 209 pounds. Last season he had 68 receptions for 1,177 yards, 17 touchdowns, averaging 17.3 yards per reception. A lot of people have this guy as like the best guy of the second tier of wide receivers. So up top you have um, Harrison, Neighbors, and um, Adunze, and then that's like your tier one guys, like might be maybe Harrison, like, in his own tier, and then below him, those two guys, and then the next tier below, you'd have, um, Brian Thomas, Jr. Um, he has good hands, he's super quick, good playmaker, I could see him with Russell Wilson, um, you know, giving him a good, a good offensive option. Don't know how many snaps, snaps you would see. Probably wide receiver three, maybe two. Miami. 
I said Miami needs offensive line or defensive line. <laughs> um, a lot of drafts I see have them taking Troy Faudanu at their pick, but I think Seattle will take him early, which I think is going to give um, Miami Oregon's uh, interior offensive lineman. Or do I think they'll take Mims? See, this, this one board I'm looking at, really, they have Mims at 16th overall on the big board, and this board has him at 24th overall on the big board. Why? Do, 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 do. Why does he have such... Super raw. He only has eight career starts. Plays too high. Leans and lunges when he misses his hands. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think Miami in the position they're in, they need to take a guy that's a little more of a complete product. Um, they can't get a guy who like needs a, a super long development time. So I think they'll, they're going to take, um, from my Oregon Ducks, Jackson Powers Johnson, 6'3", 328 pounds, big, big dude, that dude is my height, weighs more than 100 pounds, more than me, um, he's a center, but he can probably play offensive line off the center, right, hold on, how am I messing this up? I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to overthink it. I think this guy's a more complete product. Um, they have him as a center. I think he can play off center. He can play interior. He can play anywhere else in the offensive line as well. He's a bulldozer, high motor, great blocker, strong hands. I think that even if they do play him out of position, he's going to cause less issues for you than Mims will. Just my opinion. Philadelphia, I said that Philadelphia needed defense. They needed defense. So, let me give them... Let me just double check here. I've, my predictions are all out of whack. This, this board has this dude real low. Why'd they have him so low? That's interesting. I don't like that they have him so low. Compared to these other boards, it makes me think that there's something going on. I was originally going to give them Nate Wiggins, because I saw a lot of good stuff about him, but now like, I'm not even seeing him on this other board. I have the athletic board, I have the Tankathon board, I have the CBS board all up. I don't even see him on this board. And that's making me question... Up. Like my mock that I already wrote out is like completely useless now because mm, it's like it's all messed up. Okay. Give me this guy. This is a total shot in the dark here. I'm lost here. Drewson Newton, interior rusher, six foot two, three hundred and four pounds, interior defensive lineman from Illinois. Uh, Fifty-two tackles, eight point five. 
perceptions. I don't know if that works. 7.56. Oh, I thought his career. Excuse me. So, 52 tackles, 7.56. Two best defenses, one uh, forced fumble. Six foot one says six foot two, so it says six foot one at three hundred four pounds. Jerzon Newton, this board has been twenty seventh overall. This one's been twenty first overall. I have him going at twenty second overall to Philadelphia. Alright. Minnesota. Minnesota. I should think QB and defense. I already had them taking Jared Versier. Now, I'm going to have them taking Cooper DeJean. Honestly, the back half of this year, just full, like I'm, I'm so lost right now. My mock has already fallen apart. And I'm, a lot of these are shots in the dark. I'm way less confident in all these picks at this point. Uh, Cooper DeJean, DeJean, defensive back from Iowa, plays at corner, I believe. Six foot one, two hundred three pounds, forty one tackles, five pass defenses, two interceptions. Now, finally, Dallas. I said they offensive line, defensive line, wide receiver. Now I'm gonna have a Marius Mims come off the board. Um, like I said, this one draft I'm looking at, they actually have him going here 24th overall. This other one has him going at 16. Like I said, he's super raw, but Dallas make or break there, perhaps pick. Um, now we come to the 25th overall pick, the Green Bay Packers. I said that they need offensive line, defensive line, and line backer. So, do I have them take? Do I go on? This might be a range at offensive tackle, but I'm gonna do it. Have them take Graham Barton at 25th overall in the draft. Graham Barton, uh, interior offensive lineman, offensive tackle from Duke, six foot to five point five inches, three hundred and thirteen pounds. Um, seems like you know a, a guy coming in with you have a young good quarterback in love, get him that protection. I think they need wide receiver, offensive lineman, or corner back. Now, this draft I'm looking at here does not have this guy going here, but they they have Tampa taking an edge rusher. I don't think Tampa needs an edge rusher. I really don't. Why does this see this draft doesn't even have Nate Wiggins in here? Because I think, well, in my opinion, Nate Wiggins is the best one left. This this board has the next best cornerback after Deshaun as um, Kool Aid McKinstry. What's going on with Nate Wiggins that I'm not seeing, or these other boards aren't seeing? But like. The ringer is super out on him. I don't know. I might put Nate Wiggins here. I don't know if something happened with him. But I think they had a cornerback. I think he's good. He's from Clemson. Six foot one and a half inches, 173 pounds, 29 tackles, one sack, six pass defenses, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. Come back to Arizona. 27th overall pick, wide receiver, cornerback, defensive end. Okay, so we need a cornerback. Let me take the next best one. That's so much. 
what's going on here. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna take him. Kool-Aid, McKinstry, quarterback from Alabama, five foot eleven and a half inches, 199 pounds, 32 tackles, seven pass defenses. Um, this other board has uh, Kamari Laster above him, but I like I like uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry better. I think that I don't know why he's falling. I I, I don't know why. Uh, I don't. Same thing with uh, Nate Wiggins. Like maybe something's happening with corners, where they're maybe losing some value or something, and I'm not aware of it. But Kool-Aid McKinstry, I'll put him there. Next we have Buffalo. Buffalo needs a wide receiver or a defensive back. And I'm giving them the wide receiver with the coolest name in this entire draft. Adonai Mitchell. Adonai, if you don't know, I believe it's the Hebrew word for Lord. It's what they say instead of uh, the name Yahweh, out of respect. Uh, Adonai Mitchell is a wide receiver from Texas, six foot two and a half inches. Turned 5 pounds, 55 receptions for 845 yards and 11 touchdowns last season, averaging 15.4 uh, yards per reception. Now we come to the Detroit Lions. I thought that their biggest needs were edge, D-line, and D-back. This draft I'm looking at here has them taking Keon Coleman wide receiver. Now, I don't think they need another receiver. The Lions have Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laborda, who are both really, really good. I think they need an edge rusher. So I think they're going to take... I think they're going to take Job Robinson. Um, six foot three, 254 pounds, 15 tackles. Um, four sacks, one pass defense, two forced fumbles, edge from Penn State. I, I got some comments, I don't remember exactly, but I had some comments about John Robinson in the last draft. I did bring him down a little bit, I think I had him maybe going up here to Atlanta or something, and that's obviously a reach. But I think here for Detroit at 29th, that makes sense. I don't think they need another receiver. Um... This dude is super athletic, 4.48 second 40 yard dash, 10 foot 8 inch broad jump, 4.25 second 20 yard shuttle, high motor. Uh, I think that Detroit would be picking up a great player here. Now Baltimore, Baltimore honestly I feel like is squared away in a lot of places, but offensive line, edge, and D-back if they need anything. Um, so, maybe here I'll put, maybe here I'll put Kamari Lassiter. This, like I said, the, this other big board I'm looking at has him above Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think Lassiter is not as good as him, but I'll put him there. He's a defensive back from, um, Georgia, playing cornerback, 5 foot 11 and a half inches, 186 pounds. 37 tackles, half a sack, 8 pass defenses. This board I'm looking at here has him at 37. This board has him at 27. I have him going 30th. I think the heck I'm fine with that. Now, not the 31st overall pick is the San Francisco 49ers. I think they need offensive, offensive line. I think they need a cornerback. And I think they need a wide receiver, so do I take... Do I take Keon Coleman here, wide receiver? Or maybe Ladd McConkey? I think they go Keon in their system. Or do I give them... There's two offensive tackles here, Tyler Guyton or Jordan Morgan. But they feel like they might be reaches. Thinks the bigger need. I guess it's up to me. Do I think they need an offensive line more? 
I think they do. They were dealing with some injuries down the down the stretch last season on their line. So give me. I think Jordan Morgan fits in their system a bit more. Offensive tackle from Arizona, six foot five inches, three hundred and eleven pounds. Um, really smooth mover for his size. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna give him the offensive tackle there, and finally Kansas City. I think they need a wide receiver, a defensive back, or a running back. Hmm. Um, so give me the next best receiver in the draft. Keon Coleman. I think last draft I had them getting Adonai Mitchell here at the end of the draft. Give me Keon Coleman here, wide receiver from Florida State, six foot three and a half inches, turned thirteen pounds. He had fifty receptions for six hundred and fifty eight yards, eleven touchdowns, averaging thirteen point two yards per reception. So here it is. Probably my final mock draft. I can't imagine it can't change too much. I don't know, like I said, a lot of this I just did see in my pants just now because that Seattle pick threw me. Like, I, I'd written up to here pretty much, and then I changed my mind on Seattle. Then I was basically flying blind the rest of the draft. And like I said, this Giants pick, I think this ends up being Minnesota in actuality. So I think Minnesota's draft is going to look a lot different than this. Which is then going to change everything else up and down, but like I said, I can't predict trade, so I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sure you're going to have lots of feedback in the comments down below, but let me know. At least let me know if this was better than my last draft. I'm not a draft guy. I don't pretend to be. It's an ASMR channel, but if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Until next time, guys.